Hi everyone and welcome to the Big Mountain Analytics channel. My name is Julie Sebi. This video accompanies a blog post and an eight-part blog series on Spotfire data limiting. You can find the introduction to the series as well as the post this video accompanies at the link shown on the screen. In this video, I will explain how data limiting differs between the web player and the desktop app. More specifically, I'm going to talk about panels, filtering schemes, and visualization properties. For this demo, I'm using an airline's data set that I picked up on data.world. To illustrate the differences, I'll keep both the DXP and the web player up for the entire demo. The screen is a little bit scrunched, but I feel like having both of them showing at the same time really helps illustrate the differences. I'm performing this demo in Spotfire 7.12, but all content still applies through Spotfire 10.1. And before I get started, I just want to draw your attention to the edit button in my web player. I have the edit button because I have a full desktop license. Users who do not have a desktop license will not have this button. Now, my demo file has three pages, and the only difference between these pages really are the filtering schemes and the filters in the text areas that I need to use for demonstration purposes. So to start, I want to show you the key differences between panels related to data limiting. Now, in the desktop app, I have full access to the data panel, the filter panel, and the details on demand panel. I can use them and turn them off and on, primarily by clicking on the buttons in the toolbar or simply clicking the X to close them in each of the individual panels. Because the web player is different, I have set up buttons connected to Iron Python scripts to turn these panels on and off in the web player. Here's my show hide data panel button, my show hide filter panel button, and my show hide details on demand button. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the button for the data panel works in the desktop app as I just demonstrated, but if I click on it, you'll see it processing, but nothing actually happens. And that's because the data panel is not an option in the web player. The other two buttons do work to turn the details on demand panel on and off, as well as the filter panel. My other screen right there we go now these buttons are important because the user and the web player cannot turn the details on demand panel on and off you'll notice in the status bar that there are options for the collaboration panel the bookmarks panel and the filter panel so essentially i don't really need this hide filter panel button they can turn it on and off if they want however there is no such button for the details on demand panel and there are no options for it in the one menu that's in the web player if you would like for your users to have access to the details on demand panel, you have to provide a button for it in a text area. The other option is to simply leave the details on demand panel open, as I've done in page three, but this takes up a lot of space, and once they've closed it, they can't get it back. The filter panel is different between the desktop and the web player in several ways. First, users don't see the filtering scheme in the filter panel in the web player. Here's user filtering showing up in the desktop app, but you'll see that it does not show up in the web player. Users also cannot organize the filter panel. They can only work with what the author of the project gives them. In the desktop app, there are options to right click and organize filters. There is no similar right click option and there are no options in the main menu. There is also the ability to create action controls that only reset visible filters, which means that if you hide filters, web player users cannot reset them. And as a developer, this is helpful because we can effectively use filtering schemes without worrying about users resetting them. As long as you hide the filters that you don't want them to touch and only allow them to reset visible filters. And I just want to show you where to find that in the desktop app. If you're editing the text area, it's part of your action control buttons. Under functions, you'll see the option to reset all filters or only reset the visible filters. And in order to demonstrate this concept, I paused the video and went ahead and I added another filter to my text area. So this is the arrival time. And as you can see, it is not visible in the filter panel. So if we do a little bit of data limiting on our unique carrier, which is in the filter panel, and then some additional filtering on the arrival time. If I click the reset all filters, it resets everything. If we perform filtering on unique carrier and again arrival time and then hit reset visible filters, the arrival time is not reset because it's not visible. 
So to briefly summarize, the data panel is not an option in the web player. The details on demand panel is visible only if developer gives the user access, which they can do by leaving it open or by providing an action control button with some iron python to turn it on and off. And with the filter panel, you have a lot of options and flexibility between showing and hiding filters and using action control buttons and or iron python uh, scripts for users to turn it on and off. Now lastly, I want to talk about visualization properties in the web player. It's very common to limit with expression, marking, subsets, or rules, all of which are part of visualization properties. And I can show you those here. So your limiting with expression and your limiting with marking is going to be found in the data menu. Limiting with subsets has its own menu, as does showing and hiding with rules. Now, I have accessed that with a right click, and you can also use the visualization properties button, but neither that button nor the right click is an option within the web player. Users don't have access to visualization properties in the web player, so all of these forms of data limiting are safe. In conclusion, Spotfire has many controls in place that allow the developer to safely limit data without worrying about users accidentally breaking limitations. For more Spotfire content, please check out for more Spotfire content, check out BigMountainAnalytics.com. Thank you.